Hey everybody, welcome to the Roaming Barista Turkish Coffee Making Guide. So we're going to start with a rundown of the equipment. So first here we have the Turkish coffee pot, which is called the Ibrik. Next we have the Bunsen burner stand, or Bunsen burner. And here we have our Turkish coffee mill. Um, so it works like a pepper mill, you'll just grind and it'll go into the basin below. Um, I don't recommend that you use a Turkish coffee mill just because it's a lot of effort. Um, and you don't get a whole lot of result, even when using uh, this power tool that I'm about to demonstrate right now. Um, even with that amount of speed and rotation, you get very, very little end product, so it's just a lot more effort than it's worth. I usually just stick with the same old coffee grinder that I grind uh, most uh, things in, which is my um, MCAP M4 here. I think it gets the job done pretty well, and it's just a lot faster than anything else. So we're going to start by uh, filling the e full of water. So I'm using 150 milliliters of room temperature water here. Uh, we're going to place that on the side. And of course, we have our um, cup preheating over there. Next, we're going to weigh out our coffee. So we're going to use 24 grams of coffee here. And for the setting on the grinder, we're going to use a setting that is finer than espresso. I go about one or two um, inc number increments lower than espresso on my MCAP M4, uh, although it'll vary depending on what type of device you use. Um, this is pretty much as fine as you'll ever grind coffee. So let's go ahead and get started. So just a note on grinding with a grinder such as this, when you grind on a Turkish coffee setting, um, there is a possibility that the coffee will actually just get stuck and just rotate on the top just because the space between the burrs is so narrow. So if that happens to you, then just slowly coarsen it out until the grinds begin to come out uh, or the grinds begin to start grinding on the top and then you can just kind of dial it back down to a lower setting. So here we're just placing the coffee into the e And then we're going to go ahead and stir it. So we're only going to want to stir it at this point. So we're just going to combine the coffee and the water just initially when it's at room temperature. You're not going to want to stir it after this point. And it'll become pretty apparent why that is later um, as we get into it. So we're just going to set the spoon aside. All right, so now that we have our e all set up, we're just going to go ahead and set up this Bunsen burner stand. So I turn my Bunsen burner on to the maximum, but if you're using a stovetop burner, you're probably going to want to set it to medium to medium high, just because the e is so small that it'll easily overheat on a stovetop burner. So now we have a uh, top view of this going. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to boil over the Turkish coffee twice. So a boil over is what's going to happen right now, which is uh, the coffee is going to form a raft on top of the coffee liquid and it's just going to float up. So we're going to want to do this twice. And what this kind of does is it will, first of all, bring the coffee to temperature. And secondly, um, in the process of boiling over, it'll bring the coffee up to the top and it'll come down along the side. So this will kind of reduce the amount of fines that you'll find in the cup later. So after the first boil over, we will wait um, just about 30 seconds just uh, to give it some time before we start our second boil over.
All right, so here we go with the second boil over. So the second boil over is going to happen a lot faster than the first. And what we're going to notice with the second boil over is that the raft will actually begin to break a little bit. So you're going to have to kind of temper the heat um, just a little bit more than you would. And you can see that the second boil over occurs, you know, in a fraction of the amount of time that it takes for the first one to happen. So just keep an eye out for it. Um, these things do boil over um, over the e-brake and make a mess pretty easily. So, you know, just uh, don't keep your don't take your eye away from it. So after the second boil over, um, we've turned off the heat. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it settle. And I give it about two minutes to settle. And this settling time allows the coffee to settle um, at the bottom. And it also just gives some infusion time um, for the coffee liquid. So now a minute has passed. We're pretty much set here. I'm just going to hit the timer and we are going to get ready to pour. So um, as we're pouring this, we're just going to want to pour really slowly. The slower you pour, the less likely you're going to have a large amount of grinds in there. And even you can kind of see at the rate I'm pouring right now, grinds are falling into the cup. Um, really, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. That's really just part of the Turkish coffee experience. But that being said, guys, uh, this pretty much concludes the Turkish coffee guide. So drink slow and enjoy. For more details on Turkish coffee making, please visit the link below. And thank you for viewing.